Uh, not a lot to talk about. This is a pretty standard button open. Okay. All right, so small blind versus big. Once the blinds are even, I really don't have any preference between three betting or calling. It's probably just mostly a call, 80-20, I'd say. This time I'm just gonna throw in a three bet, make it 60. Um, this spot can be a little bit annoying with these types of hands, but given that we are in position, um, we're certainly not folding. King time's a little bit too strong here. Uh, we will have to navigate a little bit cautiously. It looks like Jeremiah is about 700 effective, so a little bit below 150 big blinds. We're going to arrive SPR of five and a half. Uh, so there will be some post flop maneuverability, but mostly we're just going to flop bluff catchers with hands like this. So we have three big connected cards. These are usually pretty good for the three better. Not amazing at the top of our range. We're both going to have almost an equal amount of King Jack. Uh, he's going to have Jack 8 suited and I'm not. Uh, he's going to have plenty of two pairs. I think I just need to start developing a checking strategy. Hands like pairs below the 8, 9x, some 10x. These hands just make sense to throw into a check. Just some aces and some queens to balance it out. This is a pretty good check by Jeremiah. Um, he could actually probably range check on this texture, though I imagine hands like tens, queens, and the like would like to prefer to bet. Um, <clears throat> given that it's a rainbow texture, it does reduce the two pair combos. There's only two combos of 10, nine, two combos of queen, 10. It does restrict his value pretty significantly. He will have jacks as a protected hand. Um, it's funny because if he had bet, I feel like my hand gets to do a little bit of raising, but once he elects to check, now I'm a little uncertain how much betting I'm supposed to do with my hand. Um, instinctually, I think a fair amount, uh, as we do get to apply a lot of pressure to hands like ace-jack, ace-king, he does have us notched with a hand like king-queen that checks pretty easily, queen-jack which checks pretty easily, uh, and he will have a lot of queen-x in his checking range. Uh, I am going to elect to start betting to keep us uncapped since we do block the nuts and he mostly will probably only be three betting king-jack suited. So with 125 in the pot, I think we're going to want to go somewhere in the neighborhood of 50. All right, so I mean, my hands under pair is gonna square like cones, go into a fold. Just gonna talk about my range. I think it's important to check hands like this, six, sevens, eights, just so we can actually have check folds. My hands like ace, king, ace, jack, these like overcard gutter hands or these pairs like nine X, 10 X. They're just never folding. So it's important to have hands like this in your check fold range because it prevents your betting range from being too out of line. Just to raise, we'll just go 20. Mm. Yeah. 20. Switch it up. So this is the third time that we've been blind on blind and he's raised me every time. He's had aces one of those times, but we're still gonna call Jack Nines a very decent hand. Okay. <clears throat> this is the spot that we have all the ace king. She has none. So these boards are like deceptively good for bigger bets and they function pretty well. Then again, it's also a spot where she is supposed to play some jack raises versus a small size. So I'm pretty, I'm a pretty big fan of just going small with a hand like eights. 
about a worse hand or a hand that can turn better or like a bigger bet and kind of split range that way. But this one I'm just gonna bet small and go quarter pot. 10, 20, 30, 40, yeah, quarter. Challenge the bet. For that size, um, I don't think this is even a decision. Of course, we're calling bot and pair with a club. Um, if he'd bet bigger, I think we'd potentially have a decision, but um, for the sizing, we can't fold. So now we have a spot where we have a hand that doesn't necessarily beat too much, especially after calling flop. She just has a lot of pairs that are better than eights. But that doesn't mean you just get to start bluffing it off because my hand's still too good and sometimes she has smaller pairs. So it's going to be a spot where we're just going to go to showdown and lose a lot. But that's kind of the nature of spots like this when you have a middling hand strength where you can't get value from worse and bluffing is a little bit too creative. So we obviously have a two pair here, but it's not a slam dunk two pair because all of his queen 10 just got there. Um, and so we're, I think we're, we're probably have the best hand here, but there's a chance we don't. Um, I'm gonna block bet. Um, if he raises, we're gonna have a decision, um, but he might also be raising his club. So we're not auto folding either. Um, so the pot is 60. Um, we're going to bet 20 and hope to get called by one pair. Block size is good. <clears throat> she has a lot of weak ace X, some king X. Not necessarily too many bluffs. Her bluffs would be like clubs. And then let's say she had a hand like jack 10, queen, she would just jack. So it's one of these spots where her range is pretty capped, but like just because it's capped doesn't mean you get to just like bluff it off versus it. So I guess I just fold and she can win because she just has pairs and I'm very confident that I lose. a little bit on the blue side, but uh, I think a hand that is worthy of V-pipping. Interesting texture for us, massive range advantage here. Um, our hand doesn't really need a ton of protection. It also doesn't really get value from worse all that often. I don't know that... Yeah, this probably plays better as a check back. Uh, our other eights will be better served to bet. So if we have eight, seven, eight, nine, uh, we're much more inclined to be betting here. Given that we do block hands like queen 10, queen jack, um, but also block some better hands like king queen as well. Uh, I think we can serve to check back. It also allows us to get potentially two streets from a worse eight, since we do technically have the quote unquote nut eight. Uh, we won't play a lot of check back on this board texture, but I think this is one of the candidates we can choose, um, as well as like some weak ace X and some king X. So this flop is obviously one that's pretty advantageous to the aggressor pre-flop, but it's connected enough that it's not shocking that Burkett can have some checkbacks. Like I think when it's two-tone, he doesn't have to see bet range, um, but it is still a little unusual that he doesn't bet. Um, probably weights him a little bit towards showdown and maybe some weaker value that he's just kind of choosing to play this way, as well as some slow plays, like maybe hands that just have the board totally crushed. Um, although it is kind of hard to have this board totally crushed. Uh, obviously, pretty good turn. I think that my range overall won't find uh, tons of bets here. I think a lot of my range will be uh, weaker top pair, 
second pairs, third pairs, straight draws, flush draws, and so uh, plus just air. Um, but with a hand like this, since I will want to start betting some bluffs, it makes sense to um, start betting this now. And I think we can go a little bit on the large side. Um, probably going for something like three quarters. Uh, I'm just going to go for 25. 25 is net. Okay, this size by Matt is totally fine. Uh, maybe a little bit large. $35 in the pot. He's leading here for about 80%. Um, yeah, this might be a little bit on the large side. Uh, my range is by no stretch of the imagination capped. I definitely have a seven suited, even though it's only two combos. I also have pocket sevens. Uh, and he just doesn't have very many nutted hands. We block ace eight, we block king eight of diamonds, uh, both very relevant and very important. Uh, he will have a lot of drawing hands here. So this was gonna be a mandatory bet if check to. Now I think it's a mandatory bluff catch and will very potentially serve as a two street bluff catch, assuming that hands like nine, 10 and five, six don't improve. So it's not too surprising to see Berkey call based on what I kind of assign his range as on the flop. He is now especially weighted, I think, towards showdown value and doesn't often have better than one pair here. He also doesn't have <clears throat> a ton of missed draws, I don't think, because I think most of those are also draws on the flop and would start betting the flop. Uh, when I think about the value hands that I can have in my range, I actually have a fair few of them that are pretty strong. And so at this point, I think we can polarize and pretty much bet at least every two pair and maybe some of our good top pairs as overbats and throw in some of our missed draws as well. We, we even back into a straight here occasionally with 6-4 suited, 9-6 suited. Um, I think going like 1.7 to 1.8 X pot is probably good. I'm gonna go 150. 150 is the bet. Okay, this just really isn't a thing here. I was very well prepared to just like call all bets here because the five is a very good bluff card for his range. Um, sure, he'll have some six, nine, and I'll have none. And I guess he'll have some six, four, uh, and I'll have none. With that said, he doesn't have a lot of strong hands as played. He could have exactly sevens. He should never have seven, five. Uh, I don't think that hand wants to bet 80% on pot or on turn. Uh, no single seven really wants to choose that size. Also, most of his ace X doesn't really want to choose that size because I do have protected hands like ace 10, ace seven, ace five. Now though, with all that being said, I feel inclined to hero fold and I'm calling it a hero fold because this bet is kind of nonsense. He has too many bluffs and not enough value. So even if somehow, some way he has six, nine and six, four in full, which he just doesn't. Um, let's say he has them in half combos to be more realistic. That's 16 combos of nutted hands that could choose the overbet size. I mean, choosing this sizing with two pair worse than ace five would be a tremendous mistake. So having king seven, king eight, seven, eight, uh, eight, five type of holdings for this size is definitely a big error because my auto calls are a seven, a five, uh, king eight. Uh, I don't really have king eight, but I guess I could have like king seven of hearts or diamonds. My single pairs aren't really ever calling unless they are a six, a nine, a four. My king X is almost exclusively fold with the exception of king nine. I uh, don't think I'm opening king six in this spot, but if I have it at a low frequency, it would call. So obviously having eight, six here or eight, nine would be better than queen eight, but I'm kind of finding it myself in a spot where uh, this sizing just makes such little sense that I do want a hero call. Um, that being said, uh, I would almost certainly talk myself into the same call with an ace or a king because I would be blocking his strongest two pairs, which is much more relevant than blocking the eight outside of the fact that I do block sets. Um, 
I'm gonna let him get away with one here. In, in my experience, when somebody makes a, a non-incentivized bet that's this large, in a spot where their bluffs outweigh their value, maybe four to one, five to one, something of that nature, Matt's a little bit too sharp to not recognize that this is an overbluff spot. And I think he's just kind of leveraging that perception with the fact that he got lucky and rivered uh, an open ender or a gut shot with six nine or six four, uh, or potentially turned a set with sevens. Uh, so maybe I'm saved by the weakness of my hand or uh, the size that he chose, but I would have basically called anything else. You bluff? I'm not telling you. I'm stuck like three times more than anybody in this game. I don't need to I give almost, info. I almost called you with the nut bottom. <laughs> I was calling Queen like Jack eight. high? No, I had an eight, oh. but like that size was just real nonsense. <laughs> it's funny, I said I wouldn't I didn't know if I was gonna open King Six from the last spot, then I get it dealt, and obviously it's an open. <laughs> So this hand is going to pretty much fall squarely in the middle of my defending range. No reason to ever really 3-bet this hand or fold it in this formation. Uh, it's going to be a pretty clear call, so we're going to call. Okay, a bit of a similar spot as the last one, except this time I have a pretty significant range advantage. Um, the King X type of hands that I would like to check back would be very similar to the one that I'm holding, the weakest ones, um, in practice perhaps. But in theory, I think we would actually want to do more checking back with like King Jack, King Nine uh, type of hands, maybe even a little bit of King Queen with no club. Uh, so with that said, I do think my hand requires a little bit of protection. I don't think we stand to get check raised here all that often. Uh, so I'm going to go a little bit on the larger side, so we're going to bet 15 into 35. Okay, this board is a pretty good one for Berkey's range opening from the low jack. I'm going to have a decent number of hands that can defend here against this bet sizing, which I think is probably about the right kind of sizing for this board. I do want to have some check raises, and since my hand has a club in it, particularly the queen of clubs. Uh, this is gonna be one of my better candidates. I'm gonna be able to block some of his strongest kings like king queen and king jack. I'm also gonna be able to continue barreling on a club which I wouldn't easily be able to do if I didn't have a club. So I think this hand is gonna function pretty well as a check raise. Sizing wise, considering he went with a relatively small bet, I think a relatively large check raise is gonna be pretty good. I think something in the region of 55 or 60 is gonna be good. So I'm gonna go with 55. So we do face a check raise here. Uh, given the hand that we hold, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, we don't block fours, which is unfortunate, but tens and kings obviously with three bet pre, so would king 10 suited, uh, which there are only two combinations of. So he could have king 10 off in uh, the remaining eight combos or so, but that's not enough of range for us to be concerned. Um, given the size that he chose, he will have some like 10x and king x in this range as well. It'll mostly be jack and queen dominant. So we'll be looking at like queen 10, uh, king jack, jack 10 type of hands, specifically spades with backdoors. Uh, in any event, we do have a hand that is going to defend at least one, potentially twice. Okay, that's a really interesting turn card. It gives me a limited amount of showdown value, but really not very much. I think that it would be a mistake to assume that but he's going to continue with a lot of hands worse than this one. I don't think there's going to be a lot of 10x in his range for bet calling the flop. I think a lot of 10x is going to check back. On this turn card, considering that both he and I can have flushes, I think that it's going to be kind of difficult for me to use a polarizing size, but I think a lot of my check raising range is going to want to continue on this turn. A lot of it's going to be clubs, two pairs, sets, maybe some strong top pairs as well. So there was 35 in the pot going into the flop. We then put 110 more in, so there's 145 in there. I think that something in the region of 65 is probably gonna be good. So that's what I'm gonna go with. 
65. It's a really interesting card, quite dynamic. Uh, I actually wouldn't expect Matt to have a ton of follow throughs on here. So when he bets, I would kind of, well, it is a pretty dynamic card. So something in the neighborhood of 40 to two thirds uh, does make a lot of sense. A hand like ace, jack, ace of clubs makes a lot of sense to be choosing this size. A hand like jack 10 makes a lot of sense to choose this size. King 10 obviously already had us crushed. Makes sense to choose this size. Uh, we're really not ahead of much. Jack nine of spades is a potential candidate that he could have as well as 10 nine of spades. Uh, I do think that those hands may want to lean a little bit more passive on such a dynamic turn where we have ace, queen and full and we have uh, a lot of flushes as well as perhaps a greater subset of ace x ace of clubs uh, meaning like ace 10 ace king ace jack ace queen with one club um, what i'm ultimately arriving at though is that where that's a pretty good card for our overall range it's a very bad card given the properties of the hand that we hold uh, so this is going to be a very poor bluff catcher for us. Would much rather have a hand like Queen Jack uh, than King Six at this point. No, no club. So we're gonna have to let it go. Uh, our hand could do a small amount of three betting for sure. And it's pretty tough though. And inflating the pot with an offsuit combination of broadways feels a little bit worse, so we're just gonna call. Check. Okay, he's checking range. It's a board that has a decent amount of draws. You might even defend like a little bit too wide. It's either like a bigger, better check spot, just pretty covered on queens. With a club, I'd be like a lot happier to bet. I'll just check back and like have some more coverage on like over cards to where I'm not just like under protected. Obviously quite relieved to see a check back as we were gonna have a very close decision if we faced a small bet, uh, given that we don't have a club in our hand. King Jack with the King of Clubs would be a pretty natural check or check raise. Um, without it though, I think it would've been a very thin check call. Uh, on the turn nine, we can't check call our hand, it's too weak, uh, but we do need to see a river. Uh, I don't really think we get the big bet with these types of candidates as we have zero blocking power over seven, eight and uh, we also block Landon's call folds in Jack-10, uh, which isn't really great, King-10 as well. So in situations like this, uh, where it's clear that we are gonna have to see a river and would like to set our own price, oftentimes we're just gonna lead on a slightly smaller bet sizing. Uh, something in the neighborhood of 33 to 40% pot usually functions pretty well. We could put our strongest hand, like seven, eight of clubs in this range, uh, as well as sets and uh, we can fit hands like King-10, King-Jack, Jack-10 in this range as well as uh, some one pair hands like Queen-Jack, Queen-10. Uh, our best hands like 7-8 no clubs, Queen-9, and if we ever have pocket nines, would probably be fit into a much larger sizing, something in the neighborhood of pot to pot a quarter. Uh, so with that said, $35 in the pot, we are gonna be looking at yeah, let's go 15. So he chooses a smaller size, like, well, it's not small, but it's like half pot. I think sizing wise should be a little bit bigger. Wants to like wrap Queen X, has some 9X maybe. My hand doesn't really want to raise very much because I'm getting a pretty good price to draw to an overcard. Jack's obviously like the nuts. But I don't think we cooler any of his top end value when he chooses the size. It's just more likely to be like a one pair hand. So I think he's a bit weaker than he should be, but we still just have a call. But 
We'll sort of see what happens. Okay, so on almost all rivers, we were gonna be betting somewhere in the neighborhood of 75% pot. Um, we just have a really good bluffing candidate as we wrap around the queen, which is gonna be the vast majority of Landon's bluff catchers. The rest being hands that contain an eight or a seven. So he would be looking to bluff catch hands like nine, eight, nine, seven, six, seven. Uh, so his ace, six, ace, five, ace, nines wouldn't really perform all that well. Uh, so yeah, we were gonna go like three quarters pot. The 10 changes things a lot because now the nuts are king jack, which we actually possess. Um, so now Landon's bluff catchers are gonna have to be a lot more jack heavy. Um, so he'll want to be leaning on jack 10, queen jack, jack nine, and I suppose some hands that block the eight. So maybe like 10, eight, no club, uh, queen eight, no club if he has it. It's a little bit peculiar for us because our bluffs aren't really that intuitive any longer. Jack eight made its hand. So did King Jack, which were two of our most prominent bluffs on the turn. Um, we have some two pair combos in like Queen nine, Queen 10, but Queen nine would have sized up on the turn. So that's pretty much ruled out. So we do have Queen 10 now and perhaps like some low sets like fives or sixes, but now they don't really get the opportunity to go big on the river. So basically we find ourselves in a situation where I think we would just want to like kind of scramble Landon's brain a little bit when he has a hand that versus a larger size would be a clear bluff catch. So if he has a hand like Jack 10, Jack nine uh, versus like 80 to 100% pot, those are probably gonna be some of his better bluff catches, Queen Jack, etc. cetera. Um, but if we choose something like 40% pot, I think perhaps we'll face some raises uh, from hands like maybe ace jack of clubs if he has them, uh, potentially some two pair combos, though I think he's probably too disciplined for that. Uh, we could see some raising take place from more of his 8x range, as now it probably doesn't bluff catch quite as well since I could be getting thin with a 10. Uh, so with 65 in the pot, we're looking at a bet size of 25. Who's bets 25? Uh, yeah, just have a bluff catcher. Probably gonna win. Raising is too thin, so I'm just gonna call and win. You're fucking nuts? <laughs> wow. I think I leveled myself a little on the river. You think you what? Leveled myself a little on the sizing. Yeah. Must be bad. nice to just make straights. I thought, he, I thought he talked for way too long to have a good hand. <laughs>